Hi, my name is Jacob Ben Sandberg. I'm from the Department of Informatics at the University of Amsterdam. This is the fifth time that a course has been given and um, it has tremendously changed over the years. For me it's more about how, how can we apply play in real life for education or behaviour change. The students are, uh, I think, uh, intriguingly diverse in disciplines, which I think is really super for game design. In my area, most of the people are, are hardcore gamers, so they have a limited horizon, and I think this course is, in that sense, the content delivered and the, the students uh, in there makes uh, the horizon very broad, which is very good, I think. From a didactic perspective, I think it is good to give some control to the students themselves. Some of the seminars were really done very, very well. They, they, they managed to find a, a good structure because there are very many topics still uh, discussed a lot. By now we address games from many different angles, so from the humanities, from the cultural perspectives, up to the formal aspects and machine learning aspects. So in a way it, the, the topic has broadened and become even more dis interdisciplinary than it started out. Uh, the doing part is very important to, uh, to feel and learn uh, the topics. Okay, so you can choose a topic you're passionate about or you can choose one of these topics like religion, mental health, sexuality, gender, environment, recycling, human rights, and poverty. Then you need to choose a design process so based on the recommendations we give you in the theory part. And the game can be whatever, you know, the can you fix the game if you would have to do it in this activity. Be, you do some theater with someone and then the person, the players can just raise their hand and then you stop and ask them a question. So you can be very creative, it doesn't have to be a board game or something electronic, you can really free your mind and do whatever you want. It has to be just try to do some behavior change. So think of all the steps, what's the learning goal, what's the behavior change, how do you want to achieve it and what kind of game dynamics are you going to put in it. What's happening? Um, well, we're just trying to start playing a game now. What's happening now? We gotta get the people to play their games and like get their shit together. Okay. So I'm just, everybody was really low energy, so we had to push them. <laughs> right now I'm just making sure they're out of their comfort zone and they know how it is to launch a product really quickly. <laughs> and they iterate based on that. And so are, are there any good game game ideas? In I think opinion? they're really cool games. I really want to see them like cut calling guys and see what, how people react and all that. There's also really cool ones outside. With right. the cigarettes. And I really want to see all the games, but they're taking ages that's to that's get to play. Wanted to, um, to like change the behavior of outside in front of the AB, like just putting your cigarette out and throwing it on the floor rather than in uh, the garbage. So we like made this guy um, because, yeah, he likes to eat cigarettes. And then we just uh, put it on the floor and watch people to see if they will. We had to say, like, we're in class. <laughs> <laughs> this is our prototype. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like some, they really liked it. Like they thought it was funny and some people took pictures of it. And then uh, one group of guys, they were like, oh, what a great idea. And then they all like knelt down and picked up all of the other stray cigarettes that were Whoa. already on the floor. So overall successful, I think. But yeah, it flies away in the wind. So <laughs> that's the problem. From the second year, we started with projects but at first we had the student groups devise their own projects so they were not linked to any external party and last year we changed that to connect the students with the outside world through the projects and to have a case provider to provide some context for the project they were running. on all the theoretical notions you um, are confronted with 
through the literature are applicable to your case project, some of them definitely will be or are. And I think it's a good way to uh, really um, live through the process of applying theory in a, in a practical real life context. We picked uh, to work on the case uh, of Spring Lab. Uh, this is one of the few cases that didn't come and present themselves in the beginning, but we read their presentation online and I think it all really appealed to us because it was a, uh, a project involved, that involved children. So I think that was the main um, reason that we all chose this case. We tried to come up with a game that would make the child in a wheelchair um, an important, crucial part of the game. This is um, the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we came up with a Wheel of Fortune game. Actually, we haven't given a name to our game yet. Um, thanks for reminding us. Tomorrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, um, we have these uh, beautiful, what do you call them? Wings. Wings to the wheelchair, and with these, we um, provide the children which could be either wheelchair-bound children or not, or a combination, we will provide them with um, an activity to do, which could be either drawing or acting, and they would have to act out or draw um, a word based on a category, category they pick randomly, and um, the letter they also yeah. get assigned by spinning the uh, arrow on that board. Uh, I really would like them to, as a take-home message to see that it's not just about play but it's about all interesting concepts about intelligence, about learning, about adaptivity, about motivation, about uh, biology, about evolution, about neurocognition, so that you see that games in itself don't mean that much but if you put games in the perspective of a certain and the pinning discipline you see how rich this area is. For me my hope is that play and gaming will lose its stigma of being childish and just for fun, that it will be taken serious <laughs> uh, uh, and then also the research will be taken serious because it's so often um, taken for granted or very easy swapped away for one argument well, there are so many more learnings in there and there's so much diversity happening and you can play one game this day and play the same game another day and it can have a total different, different impact or effect um, and we can learn so much. So I really hope that uh, gaming will become a, a, a serious research topic and a serious game research a serious discipline at, at the academic world because there's so much to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm still a child learning and I'm, I'm doing it for almost 20 years now and I feel still like we're kindergarten. Ellie. What? Why are you not working? <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, why oh, are you on your phone? <laughs>